News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on this Thursday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. Installing new signs in hopes of making a local intersection safer. The work being done today at the site of a deadly crash less than two weeks ago. A middle school student arrested after police find a gun and bullets on campus. How police say they found out about it and what happens now. Then first responders are turning to drones to help protect our community. Now a new type of drone has a new benefit. How these drones are already getting results when minutes count and lives are on the line. Plus, as thousands of people move to Central Florida every year, the communities they're joining are expanding, but some who call those places home are not happy about it. How leaders in one of the fastest growing cities are working to accommodate all the new neighbors. And Christmas is three months away, but that means it is holiday shopping time for many. How starting early can help stretch your dollar to get the most bang for your buck this holiday season. Coming up this hour. Those are our big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. You deserve to hear the best. That's why News 6 has partnered up with Mix 105.1. Listen to your pinpoint weather updates on Mix 105.1 while we pinpoint your weather on the go. Some teams are just better together. Live with ClickOrlando.com and streaming on News 6 Plus, this is News 6 at 9. Getting results. Good morning, I'm Bridget Ellison. So glad you're with us today. I'm Julie Barton. Candace will be in for Tom, so you will see her later today on News 6 starting at 4. It is September, but it is three months from Christmas. So that means a lot of you may have already started your holiday shopping, or if you haven't, you might want to consider it. News 6 investigator Mike Holfell will be here to talk about how starting now can help you plan and budget for those holiday purchases. You know, it's never a good feeling when you get to January and then mm. you have any holiday credit card bills so hopefully starting early can help you avoid no that. No pressure, right? No right, pressure. not at all. <laughs> Our insider guy and morning anchor Crystal Moyer will be in in a few minutes to tell us about um, something that we want to hear about from you. You know, maybe you have some hacks that you use at home or maybe with your routines that a lot of people maybe don't know how to do. We want to hear from you about those and we have a few in-house hacks that okay. we're sharing. So she'll break it down for you and tell you how you can get involved. But developing right now, neighbors, loved ones calling for change after a grandmother and three young grandchildren died in a crash involving a speeding teenager. This happened at San Miguel Road and Laurel Avenue in Point Siena more than a week ago. And that teen driver was not even old enough to have a driver's license. And now, 11 days after that crash, crews in Osceola County are installing new traffic signs. Officials and neighbors hope the four-way stop now will help get results. That work getting started this morning, and our trooper Steve is out there in Point Siena on patrol today in results one, checking it out. And Steve, this is the fastest you've seen a change like this in response to a crash. You know, right, that's 100% right, ladies. I've been in law enforcement for years, longer than I can count, really, and focused on traffic safety. And I'll tell you, this is the fastest 11 days I have ever seen a roadway change based from a fatal crash investigation. And that's pretty intense. So it's actually happening right now. I got here about half hour ago. We did our live stream and construction crews started to pull up. You can see they're out here taking measurements. This is more than just popping up a stop sign. We've got to now change the entire layout of the roadway out here. Painting needs to take place, stop bars, and back towards this way, they've already started to install the warning signs leading up, showing that there is new signage out here. This is not gonna be an overnight type of thing. Crews will be out here for probably several hours reshaping this. A few other things I noticed while out here were even with the crews that are out here, the, the safety uh, personnel from the construction crews, the crossing guards. Drivers are still out here running stop signs while we're still sitting here with a memorial right behind me. So yeah, we can install things out here, but at the end of the day, drivers really need to start to focus on what they want within their community. So we'll be out here for the remainder of the day, giving you the update, letting you know when these signs get put into place. But if you live out here in Point Siena, you need to be very aware that a new traffic plan is being installed as we speak live out here at Laurel Avenue and San Miguel, and crews will be out here 
for the rest of the morning. Now, I'll be back out here with uh, an explainer of really, or I can't believe I have to explain, but I'll be back out here in about a half hour telling you the do's and don'ts of a four-way stop. For now, live in Point Santa with results one on patrol. Ladies, back to you. All right, Steve, we'll see you a little later. Thank you. Developing right now a scare on the campus of DeLand Middle School. A 13-year-old student was arrested after police say he was caught with a gun and bullets in his backpack. News 6's Ezzy Castro reports from the school this morning. The principal here is praising the person who reported the gun and says that this is an example that if you see something, say something. Now, DeLand police released this photo of the gun, which they say was found with ammo inside the student's backpack. According to investigators, the school was placed on lockdown just after 2 o'clock yesterday. And within minutes of arriving, they were able to locate the 13-year-old student and take him into custody. He's now charged with possession of a firearm on school grounds. Meantime, DeLand police told us they got the tip through an application called Fortify Florida, which allows students to report any suspicious activity. Investigators say no one was hurt during all of this. Meantime, the principal did tell parents yesterday that there will be more officers on campus today. In DeLand, Ezzy Castro, getting results, he said. Thanks, Ezzy. Even though Hurricane Lee is several hundred miles off the shores of Florida, it continues to bring dangerous rip currents. And this has been a problem, uh, ongoing problem, even through the weekend and the start of next week. And now Volusia Beach Safety is advising everyone to stay safe and stay out of the water. Along with rip current conditions, there's also a high surf advisory for Volusia and Brevard through tomorrow night. Sumter County, home to most of the villages, is investing in the newest and best drones, and now we are seeing why. The Sumter County Sheriff's Office says it now has 12 high-tech drones, one for every shift, flying them several times a day. And they say some two dozen people are alive today because of these radio control tools. News 6's Eric Von Anken shows us how they're getting results in protecting the community. Every year, thousands of people move to Central Florida. And as some say, the growth is outweighing the charm. I came here looking for the small town, getting away from the bustle and hustle, and uh, it's not there anymore. Up next, how leaders in St. Cloud are working to accommodate all the new neighbors. You're watching News 6 Getting Results. Here's a live look over downtown Orlando from the Light Orlando camera. We'll be right back. News 6 Insider is sponsored by Orange County Library System. Live with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, weather with meteorologist Candace Campos, and Central Florida's only traffic safety expert, Trooper Steve. You're watching WKMG, getting results at 9 a.m. All across Central Florida, local cities are struggling to keep up with our booming population. And since St. Cloud is the second fastest growing city in the state, News 6 anchor and Boomtown reporter Justin Warmoth went there to see how leaders are balancing growth with quality of life. Well, to meet demand, Osceola County plans to open a new high school in 2026. The fire chief tells us he needs to hire more than 60 new firefighters in the next five years. Yeah, so many people mm -hmm. moving here, yes. you know, every week. Well, meteorologist Troy Bridges is here now. And yeah. It's time for our meme of the day, Troy. Oh, yeah, a lot of people love these things, and you may know that very well if you've eaten a few. <laughs> when someone says Publix chicken tender <laughs> subs are on sale, they're just flying through the water. But just don't get in that water right now. Oh, no, not at nope. all. That's good advice. Bad idea. Our pin of your photo of the day is very nice. Oh. Look at that beautiful rainbow mm -hmm. in Daytona Beach Shores. This is from N. Coleman. Submit your weather or cool photos to us on clickorlando.com slash pins or on your free News 6 Pinpoint Accurate Weather app. That is gorgeous. My advice, take those photos on the beach, but don't get in the water, as Bridget said. We do have big issues out there, and it's all because of Hurricane Lee. Remember that? It's still about 700 and 750 miles off of our coast, but continuing to give us issues. So now through even Monday, possibly even later than that, we're going to have that high surf to deal with. Right now there's a high surf advisory because seas will be between 6 feet and 10 feet. Beach erosion a real concern. That dangerous rip current will continue as well through Monday. And there is a small craft advisory 
for the next couple of days. I don't think those things are going to change anytime soon. We've got to get this hurricane up and out. Now I know again, it's more than 700 miles away from us off the coast and moving to the north, eventually impacting New England. And then after that, likely Nova Scotia. So moving well to the north of us and nowhere near us, but it's so big and it has been so strong for so long that it is going to continue to impact us. Remember, it was a category three major hurricane for several days now as of the 5 a.m. advisory this morning, it was downgraded to a Category 2. So here's what we're dealing with. Again, into the next several days, likely into the middle part of next week. That high rip current risk sees up to 9 feet on Saturday just off the coast and then farther out to sea for boaters. Sees up to 10 feet. That's a dangerous setup. Now here's a look at your pinpoint accurate forecast. Your forecast is brought to you by your Southern Lexus dealers. So today we warm two degrees above the average. The average high is 90. We go to 92. Notice that coverage of rain at 50% right around 2 p.m. And that continues through the early evening. And then by 11 o'clock tonight, some lingering redevelopment as we see the West Coast sea breeze interact with the East Coast sea breeze. So the future radar by 3 p.m. Bus stop time showing that line of showers and a couple of thunder showers. The severe risk, not all that high, but we will see some heavy downpours moving inland of the beaches. So it may be um, something you want to do is go to the beach because it won't be raining so much at the beaches. Again, remember, it's a dangerous setup. Just sit on the sand, enjoy that or walk around. Here by 5 p.m. we'll see that line of showers and thunder showers along I-4 and then the West Coast Sea Breeze gets in on the action after that. Look, it's 8 p.m. in Lake Sumter and Marion counties, seeing a chance for some of those heavier downpours even as late as 11 tonight when you're watching Candace, who's going to be in for Chief Meteorologist Thomas Sorrells. She'll be pinpointing some of those leftover showers and even thunder showers. But here are the high temperatures for today. Upper 80s along the coast, low 90s inland, 92 in Orlando, 91 in Ocala, and 87 for New Smyrna Beach. Now here's a look at your seven-day forecast as we get results. And you see those temperatures are going to be a little bit less hot. I'll use air quotes for that. 89 on your Saturday, 89 on Sunday, with rain chances between 40 and 50%. Ladies, back to you. All right, Troy, thanks. Well, whether you own or rent, it seems like there's always something to do around the house. As much as we love to save money, we also can appreciate saving time. Hacks are great shortcuts to make any job easier, and our talent has some useful ones to share. Our insider guide will join us next. We're getting results on News 6 at 9 and ClickOrlando.com for Castleberry, Celebration, and all of Central Florida. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Do you ever get frustrated with everyday household tasks? Maybe you're having trouble getting the stubborn stain out of your clothes. Or maybe you're trying to save money by thinking of some out-of-the-box ways to entertain your kids. So we have some help. <laughs> News 6 anchor and insider guide Crystal Moyer here breaking down some household hacks that could help out in a pinch. Oh, yes, ladies. They're not all my ideas. I'm actually soliciting or crowdsourcing you all, our viewers, to send us your tips, tricks, and household hacks so we can share them with our new six insiders. We want to hear about all of your tips that save some money and time. It could be just about anything. Just fill out this form in the article at clickorlando.com slash insider. We may feature them right here on News 6. Bridget and Candace shared some of their hacks that are tried and true. How? Oh. Oh, <laughs> She was even shocked. <laughs> so there is a difference in results when it comes to the permanent marker hack. Now, Candace says gel toothpaste won't completely get the permanent marker off hard surfaces. She says stick to the regular paste because the key ingredient to getting the stain out is the ingredients in baking soda. Oh. So if you looked at that closely, half of it that we used with the gel, it came off, but not completely. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other half that we used with the regular paste, we ended up doing it again with all of it came right off. Cool. Can we just use baking soda? I don't know. That's, a, <laughs> That's you what you know what? <laughs> Sometimes people put permanent marker on, say, like a dry erase, yeah. and you can uh -huh. take dry erase marker, color over that Swipe permanent right marker, out. and it'll come out. Yeah. So. I'm learning so much. I have no hacks. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> I'm you know, sure you do. hoping you for all. the best every day. <laughs> right. So of course You're gatekeeping be... yours for right now. <laughs> I seriously have not. <laughs> we'll be covering them weekly, of course, to share some of those hacks and tips and tricks. So if you guys have anything to share, go ahead and head to our website, clickorlando.com. Let us know. And of course, I'm going to be sharing all of those with you all. Nice. And hopefully we can use yeah. some of those too. Yes. There are some good hurricane season hacks too that we hear about. Mm -hmm. So if you have those too. <laughs> 
Thank Send you, Crystal. <laughs> well, still to come, water bill sticker shock. Why members of one community are asking the county to step in. First, though, two Orlando LGBTQ centers spray painted with hate messages. Who the man police say was behind it is and why he could face charges. You're watching News 6 at 9 getting results. We'll be right back. In the midst of a homeowner insurance crisis, many homeowners are going rogue, taking matters into their own hands. A new strategy that could reshape the way you protect your home. New 6 investigator Lewis Bolden digs into this growing trend. It's a controversial strategy that could save you money, but is it worth the risk? Discover how more Floridians are dealing with stickers shock from insurance premiums and find out if it's right for you tonight at 6 p.m. only on New 6. Live from ClickOrlando.com and WKMG, we're getting results. It was covered in spray paint a month ago, but this morning, hateful messages have since been removed from this mural. Orlando police have also made an arrest. Last month, photos on social media showed vandalized murals at the Center Orlando and Zebra Youth on Mills Avenue. The man accused could walk out of jail any moment. Here's New Six's Treasure Roberts. Now with Treasure Roberts reporting, Orlando police are asking anyone with information related to this vandalism to contact their criminal investigations division or call the crime line. New COVID-19 boosters could reach Americans as soon as today. It comes as Florida's top doctor is now going against the CDC when it comes to the updated vaccine. The FDA and CDC signed off on the new shots from Pfizer and Moderna earlier this week, recommending everyone six and up get them. But yesterday, Florida Surgeon General Dr. Joseph Latipo announced he's not recommending the shots for anyone under 65. With virtually every walking human being having some degree of immunity and the questions we have about safety and about effectiveness, especially about safety, my judgment is that it's not a good decision for young people. Latipo says they lack human clinical trials and any evidence that they're safe and effective. The CDC has previously criticized Dr. Latipo, saying his warnings about the risk of the vaccine are, quote, harmful to the American public. For the second month in a row, consumer prices have increased. The inflation rate was up 3.7% compared to a year ago in August and 0.6% higher than the month before. Gas prices per gallon hit an average of $3.84 last month, a 24% increase over July, according to Morgan Stanley. On a positive note, food prices appear to be easing at the grocery store. The Fed has raised interest rates 11 times since March 2022 in an effort to bring inflation down to 2%. The board plans to meet again next month. U.S. stocks had a mixed close Wednesday following the latest CPI report. Here's a live look at the big board in New York up 0.46 percentage points. That's about 161 points there. We'll let you know if there are any major developments. During a time when we're already seeing rising electricity rates, one community is seeing large water bills, and they could go even higher. News 6's Jerry Askin explains how neighbors are calling on Orange County to step in. For the first time ever, Orlando and South Florida will be connected by high-speed rail, and pretty soon, passengers can start taking the Brightline train. News 6's Mark Lehman shows us why company leaders say it's worth getting on board this new transportation. We told you at the top of the hour, work is now getting underway at a dangerous Poinciana intersection after a crash killed a woman and her three children. Troopers say it happened when a teen sped through a two-way stop and slammed into their SUV. Now workers are installing stop signs to upgrade that intersection at Laurel Avenue and San Miguel Road into a four-way stop now. And traffic safety expert Trooper Steve joins us live with results one in Poinciana. Now you're back out there looking at this upgrade. Hopefully it will help get some safety for results. That's right, Bridget, but at the end of the day, it's the drivers who need to obey these signs that the county's going out of the way and install. So yes, we are live right now in the community of Point Siena out here with Results One on patrol and construction crews are out here right now. Take a walk with me down the sidewalk here. And as you approach Laurel and San Miguel, it looks like a normal intersection, what would be treated as a normal two-way stop. But because of that fatal crash, construction crews are now out here 
doing a complete redesign of the con of the uh, intersection. You can't just pop up some stop signs. You need to then uh, expand the other stop signs coming a little closer to the intersection. So as you can see, they're out here repainting. It's not going to happen. Just with a, a wave of the wand. Crews have to come out here. They've already replaced some of the older pedestrian signs and they do now have the stop signs in place. But you also have to remember this is highly residential. This is, There's crosswalks out here in the first place. So even if someone approached this intersection, the people in San Miguel need to be paying attention anyway. So yes, this, can, this intersection now for residents will be a completely different layout. Something I want to show you, the stop signs that they are installing out here are going to have a flashing red beacon on top of them. This is not a permanent kind of style beacon, but it's something to get drivers used to seeing it. So there will be a flashing light on the new stop sign, kind of giving a heads up. And then way down the road over there, there are construction signs warning some of these drivers that are driving back and forth out here that a new traffic plan will be installed. So, of course, New 6, myself, will be on this throughout the remainder of the day. And, of course, once crews are completed, we will 100% let you know. But you guys know where I stand on this. The safety belongs to you guys. If this is your community, we need to obey the signs that they're going out of the way to install. For now, live out here in Point Siena with Results 1. Trooper Steve, back to you. Steve, thank you. The last few months of the year seem like they always fly by. Oh yes, which means there's no time like the present to start preparing for the end of the year holidays. Hi, I'm Mike Holfield. Coming up after the break, believe it or not, it's holiday shopping time. Have you started? The biggest thing is just to start early. You know, that way you can start kind of storing gifts now and stretch that out so you're not spending as much of your budget. Putting your shopping strategy together right after the break. Live with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve, this is News 6 at 9 a.m. Getting results. Well, we're halfway through September, and the countdown is on for the holidays. With inflation still looming, how can families buy holiday gifts and still make ends meet? News 6 investigator Mike Holfeld speaks with financial experts. Mike, thank you. Time to check out your weather. What a beautiful view as we start out our Thursday. Live look from our launch credit union camera out at the port. And Troy, you have more about what you mentioned with New England prepping for Lee. Oh yeah, coastal areas of New England are keeping a close watch on Hurricane Lee. The storm is expected to make landfall this weekend near the Canadian border with Maine. And heavy rain and wind is likely along the Atlantic coast. Lee is also impacting central Florida, bringing dangerous rip current risks as well as beach erosion possibly. Now officials in Nevada are still trying to figure out what to do about Lake Mead because of historic drought. The latest possible solution is to drain Lake Powell to fill Lake Mead. It's meant to save uh, water for all and prevent evaporation as water flows through the Colorado River system. So far, there's no decision on the prospect. Mm, that's a huge lake. Well, that's the weather around the world. Let's pinpoint your central Florida forecast. And yes, indeed, we're gonna be watching closely what's happening with Lee, if you can believe it, it's about 750, close to 800 miles away from us, off the coast, and it's moving north, heading to New England and again, the main area. So why is it still impacting us? It's because it was such a big storm for so long. It's close enough. Now that it's a category two, it's still gonna give us those issues. It was a category three for days and days, but high surf advisory in effect. We will see seas up to close to 10 feet heading into the weekend and even the first part of next week. That could lead to some beach erosion. Also, the dangerous rip current risk will continue through early next week. And for the next couple of days, we do have the small craft advisory. Not a good idea to get out on a boat. So here is the latest on Lee. Again, a Category 2 as of 5 o'clock this morning. You can see the track does take it to the north, eventually into New England and impacting Canada. Getting away from us, but at least we've got a few days to deal with those impacts. So here are the major impacts. Again, we're going to be dealing with that rip current risk through today, Friday, Saturday, and likely Sunday, even possibly Monday. Look, sea is close to 10 feet just off the beach and then farther out to sea, definitely seeing those 
waves up to 10 feet. Now here's a look at your personalized pinpoint forecast. And as we take you into those temperatures today, we will see temperatures a little bit above the average, but not by a whole bunch. The average high in Orlando is 90. We're going to 92 today, and you'll see rain chances at 50%. It's all based on the east and west coast sea breezes coming together as they fire up those storms. The storms, though, not going to be quite as strong as we've seen over the past couple of days. That risk of severe weather, not all that high. But there's 1 p.m. seeing the bubbling up of a couple of showers here and there. By 3 p.m. bus stop time, you see more of that along the east coast sea breeze pushing inland of the beaches. And then the west coast sea breeze gets in on the action. There's 5 p.m. right along I-4, the scattering of showers and thunder showers embedded. 8 p.m. we see more of the west coast sea breeze. And look at that, lingering as late as 11 o'clock tonight, dealing with a chance for some of those stronger uh, areas of heavy rain at that point, because that's when the collision occurs around 8 o'clock. But here you go with the temperatures today. The average high is 90. We're going to the upper 80s today along the coast. The low 90s for inland spots, 92 in Orlando, 92 in the villages, 91 for the high today in Sanford. Feeling like the triple digits at times today. Now, if you have an event or a special day you'd like me or Candace to pinpoint, just text the word weather to 407-917-6103 to sign up for Pinpoint on the Go. Then you'll be able to chat directly with our meteorologists and send us your photos or videos. You'll get weather text on the go so you can plan your day. Here's the next seven days, and notice the rain chances are going to stick around between 40 and 50 percent, but highs in the 80s. We're going back to the 80s, ladies. <laughs> That's, That's good news. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Troy, thank you. It's not just responding to emergencies. So many first responders use their uniforms to build trust in the community. And we'll show you what we're talking about in our roundup of good news up next. Here's what's coming up on News 6 at 6 p.m. Amid Florida's property insurance crisis, more and more Floridians are taking protecting their property into their own hands. We are clearly seeing an uptick in self-insurance, Lewis. The number of people self-insuring their homes is increasing every year, according to industry analysts. Do you recommend people self-insure? I'm investigator Lewis Bold, and I'm digging into the trend all new at 6. You're watching News 6. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is sponsored by City Furniture. Well, News 6 wants to help you enjoy dinner out on us. We're giving one of our insiders 150 bucks a month for a year to eat out at your favorite restaurants. Just sign up for free to become a News 6 insider for your chance to win. You can enter as many times as you want between now and Monday, so hurry. Head to clickorlando.com slash insider. Well, pasta hits the spot tonight. We're getting results for dinner with rigatoni pasta bake. That does sound mm. good. The About a Mom blog says it is jam-packed with flavor, not to mention a creamy sauce, beef, pasta, and cheese. For more dinner inspiration, head to clickorlando.com. We always love to get good news into our show, and that includes our first responders. They're out in the community getting results for those in need. Trooper Steve's out on patrol, and he made sure to share his favorite stories with us before we left. All right, thanks, Trooper Steve, and thanks for joining us this morning on News 6 at 9, and we'll be back at noon with more news and weather. Remember, we always break news on ClickOrlando.com. You can also find all of our stories, breaking news, and podcasts on the News 6 Plus app. We will leave you with a live look at Daytona Beach. If you're heading to the beach, stay out of the water. Dangerous conditions, Troy Washington. Hey, Central Florida, join me as we pay tribute to our veterans and reaffirm the city's commitment to bringing our heroes home as part of National POW MIA Day. This year's event will feature keynote speaker, Army Specialist Shoshana Johnson. For more information, visit orlando.gov slash POWMIA.